Hi, I am Dr. Esther from Korea. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, all right. I'm using two computers. One is for this uh, live broadcasting. Another one is um, how this uh, uh, broadcast uh, uh, is, del is delivering well one. I'm checking. <laughs> All right. Uh, today, uh, with the title, Who God Who Frets Us by Not Answering Our Prayer. Uh, and then we will meditate. Uh, Genesis, Gen Genesis chapter 15. Mm. When God bless us with a physical blessing, material blessing, spiritual blessing, emotional blessings, we are very happy and then we want to willingly to give thanks to the Lord. But the problem is that when God doesn't listen to us, when God makes us uh, be puzzled, because there is something God promised to me through the Word of God, through prayer, uh, or through any repeated environment, but it doesn't happen. That time, we are so much frustrated and puzzled. God so loves me so much. God is faithful. God is almighty. And then why God does not listen to me? Uh, this kind of puzzling or uh, wondering, uh, I believe, happened to every Christian. And same to uh, Abraham, who is our father of faith. So I want you to pay attention, uh, Genesis chapter uh, 15. Uh, Genesis chapter 15 is uh, one of a uh, uh, theologically important chapter with uh, Genesis chapter 12, chapter 17. But uh, we do not uh, want to approach it to something like a theological level but uh, personal devotional level so that uh, we can uh, find, some find some lesson and apply to our life. But it doesn't mean we do not focus on the text. We will focus on the text and then try to find out the lesson and try to apply our lives. So let's, uh, let me uh, read the chapters, the, I mean the verses to you. Uh, Verse 1, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram. Here, please pay attention. Uh, our uh, main character today is not Abraham, but Abram. He is not yet ready to receive his new name uh, because it is not yet enough time to him. So his name is Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O oh, sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, you, uh, yeah, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, O oh, sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all these to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. And I'll show you beautiful... Uh, video. I have this uh, 
video uh, in Royal Free from Pixabay. You can search if you want in internet. Okay. In at the time of in chapter fifteen, Lot, the nephew of Abraham, uh, already settled in Sodom. And then Abraham was living in Hebron, which is located in uh, Canaan land. Everything, anyhow, uh, seems to good, but suddenly war broke out. Um, and then uh, nephew Lot became the prisoner of a war. He might be killed or he might be sold as a slave or something. But because uh, Abraham had his own soldiers who was trained very well, and then he was able to defeat that allied forces. It is oh unbelievable. You know, one single family, of course, some kings helped Abraham, but Abraham was able to defeat the allied forces. And then he returned with a huge amount of loot. God blesses Abraham through Melchizedek, who uh, is presumed to be the king and priest of Jerusalem at the time. At the time when Abram was welcomed by this special uh, person, mysterious person, he must uh, have realized that ah, it was God's help. That's why I was able to defeat this uh, strong enemy. Nevertheless, it seems that Abram was afraid of the threat that could arise in the future because of, you know, there are possible enemies out there. At the time, God appeared in Abram's uh, uh, vision and then said, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. However, even though there was a successful, you know, outwardly there are continual success, and that he was rich, nevertheless he was childless. Actually, God promised uh, he will give child to Abraham uh, with the land. And then God repeated this promise about child in even chapter 13, in chapter 12, in chapter 13, two times. Especially in ancient time, childless was counted as the curse. This is because if there is no one to carry on the family line or to preserve the inheritance handed down from generation to generation, then, and there is no one to take care of them in old age, then it was uh, you know, counted as a you know, curse. And at the time, there was a culture in which if there were no children, a servant slave was adopted and the family business was passed on. That's why what Abraham uh, you know, thought about this uh, to solve this uh, uh, problem because he was child childless and then Abraham and then his wife uh, were getting old. He tried to adopt his servant, Eliezer. It is also the same to us. If God is continually silent, we try to find our own uh, methodology. At the time, God said that Abraham would have children and that his descendant would be as numerous as the stars. I love to... I love to look at the stars at night because I'm I'm living in remote place. It is so beautiful, especially during uh, summertime. So when Abraham looked at such a you know so many stars in the sky, he believed in God, and then God counted it as righteousness. And then here the word believed here. Uh, refers to the continuous and repeated act of belief, not just one time. This is very important, right? Abraham believed in God not just one time, but uh, continually, continually he believed in God. That's why Abraham is said to be the father of our faith. Maybe some of you already catched, I pronounce sometimes Abraham or Abraham. Uh, I think you can understand, right? <laughs> um, okay, 
wow, one person is writing something. Oh, thank you for joining me. Okay. If everything went well, Abraham would not have shown this uh, precious faith. What I'm trying to say is that if Abraham uh, had, didn't have any problem, how he, can, he could show uh, this kind of precious faith even to us? That means no matter the promises of God postponed or what kind of circumstance we are in, the children of Abraham must believe in God. Yeah. Because when we are in trouble, that situations can be very good time for us to show our faith, our faith. And then we have to let go of our experiences and our thought and still try to trust in God over and over again. Actually, in the same situation, whether we have faith or not, it makes a huge difference. In this sense, Apostle Paul in later anti-time in Galatians chapter 3, verse 7, he said, those who believe are children of Abraham. Uh, nevertheless, Abraham still uh, has question about um, child, about God's promises. So he wanted to get some uh, something visible, yeah, to be sure of God's promise. That's why Abraham uh, asked again, "How can I know that?" Then God let Abraham uh, bring some animals. This is so-called torch uh, covenant, torch covenant. In this point, we need to remember the ancient Near East custom about covenant. In the ancient Near East, covenants were made by splitting an animal into two pieces and then walking between them. It was, you know, bloody, right? You can imagine it. It was more than a solemn promise to pass between the blood-stained uh, corpses of animal. So this means that uh, between the two contractors, the violator becomes like a split uh, offering like this. You can read this one. Uh, if you want to know about this one, you can read the book of uh, uh, Jeremiah, chapter 34, 18 to 22. So, uh, when two parties make a covenant, of course, obviously, there must be two, part, two parts, and then two uh, contractors must be able to uh, keep that promise. Then, how, uh, then this is a general uh, shape of covenant. But in chapter 15, that covenant is something unusual because only God passed between the, you know, animal uh, body, dead body. And because the torch, torch uh, symbolizes the presence of God. And then only the torch. So if you read the entire chapter 15, it might be help, very helpful for you, right? The torch, which symbolized the uh, presence of God, passed, passed the pieces. Why God alone? Why only God must pass between the pieces of the animal? Why? Because after the uh, fall of Eden, human, human being became disabled totally. So human being was not able to keep the promise. That's why it means God binds himself to a promise with humans who cannot even be the object of the covenant. That's why we call it, it is grace. Then what is obligation or what is the uh, task of the human part? That person has only simple obligation, just to give thanks to God and then trust in God. That's all. 
Therefore, symbolically, this uh, covenant in chapter uh, 15 symbolically shows that God will take the lead in fulfilling this promise regardless of Abram's faithless. You can read uh, so many cases in entire Old Testament, even New Testament. God made the covenant um, with people, but God alone passed between the pieces, even though God is, uh, even though human is always uh, on Facebook, God is always faithful, and then God keeps his covenant until he sends his begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save us. And then detailed rituals in this uh, so-called torch covenant uh, is very difficult to explain. Why three years old animals? Why Abram uh, didn't cut the bird? And then why uh, Abram drove the bird? Very difficult. Even many commentators, they just remain uh, about the meanings of detailed rituals in chapter 15 in, as open questions. And then some years ago, I heard uh, one sermon about uh, this uh, chapter 15 uh, in, Lebedic, uh, in uh, Genesis. Uh, he interpreted that descendant of Abraham suffered uh, the slavery life more than 400, exactly 430 years old because of Abraham's unfaithful attitude to uh, this covenant. Like uh, Abraham cut the animals into two pieces, uh, into pieces, but he didn't cut the bird and then he slept, something like that. But I don't agree with that because there is no uh, basis in the text. When we apply the something from the Bible, we have to focus on the text and then we have to do our best to that text, uh, to interpret that text. Then about the bird, when the offering is bird, according to Leviticus chapter 1, it is a regulation about the bird, the offerer, worshiper, do not supposed to cut the bird because it is too small. So you can read if you want Leviticus chapter 1, verse 6 and 17. Uh, but one thing uh, general commentators agreed is that uh, the Abram's act, he drove the birds of prey, can be seen as a sort of prediction of uh, protecting his descendants from enemies such as Egypt. So although it is difficult to clearly explain the specific ceremonies, Abraham was able to gain confidence about his descendants as well as the land through this covenant. So when Abraham was puzzled, why God doesn't listen to me? God forgave me something? God provided this very meaningful, visible, important uh, ritual like a torch covenant. Uh, God made Abraham uh, have uh, confidence about God. So application today is that we too, we can be also faced uh, with the delayed answers to the prayer or difficult reality that seems to continue forever. Then even though we have faith, yes, we love Jesus, we already experienced a lot of God's uh, answers and blessings. But if we have this kind of situation such a long time, then we have doubt and discouragement. Same to me. Then we have to remember, yeah, uh, this is the time we need to switch on our faith. What I'm trying to say is that maybe many of you use your cell phone, right? But we have to recharge uh, every day or every two days something. Like that, our faith valid time is very short. So we have to recharge, recharge, just like Abraham did. He believed in God not only one time, but he believed in God continuously. So we have to switch it back. Yeah. Remember, please, our faith recharge period is very short. Uh, 
So whenever the level of faith drops, we have to hold on to the Word of God again and again and recharge our faith continually. If God, uh, if God uh, thinks necessary, then God will send someone to us so that we can get some encouragement or even some environment so that we can build our faith strong again. Because we are children of Abraham. So if God loved to treat Abraham like this, God will do the same thing to us. Don't forget, even though from our human side, uh, we have a confusion or wonders, wonderings, it doesn't mean God doesn't love us, but God still loves us. God bless you. Yeah. So this is what I want to share today. And then I want to say this one. God bless you all. <laughs> okay. I want to see you again uh, next Thursday. Yeah, I think next Thursday. See you again. God bless you. Bye-bye.